what is up guys back from the dead to bring you another video i am embarking on a journey to go through my 2024 race footage and bring out some content with you so i thought i would start it off by filming this video going through my new race bike for 2024 I bought it with my own money and I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about this new Scott Foil RC10 that I've been riding since March. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Here I am back from the dead. I, uh, yeah, I, I totally dropped the ball on making videos this year, but I promised on Instagram, uh, shout out to those of you that follow me on there that I would start going through my backlog of footage and start putting together some some content. And um, yeah, I had a, an interesting season that I'm excited to, to share with you guys. But I thought I would start it out by uh, making a little video about the bike I was racing this year. So as you can see, it's a Scott Foil. Um, I believe the model of it is an RC10. I got it back in March, so I've put tons of miles in it. I think I've put about 6,000 miles um, and yeah, probably like 20 race days. So I feel like I am pretty qualified to talk about this bike. I know there's just countless YouTube channels out there that they really have an incentive to, to kind of sell you things. and. I will tell you guys uh, truthfully that I bought this bike with my own money um, like I've bought every other bike. I uh, have no relationship with Scott. I uh, did my research and thought that this was the, the best blend of price, performance, and had a lot of the features that I was looking for in my next bike um, that I'll, I'll go into. And yeah, um, I know a lot of you um, have been asking about the red BMC that I, I used to ride. Um, I still have it. Um, <laughs> I honestly need to sell it. But yeah, I, I think uh, this bike and that bike are, are obviously pretty different. The BMC is kind of just an all around bike and this is an aero bike. And yeah, let's start getting into it and, uh, and talk about the, the pluses and minuses of going to an aero bike. And I wanted to do this all one take like, uh, my boy GC Performance or whoever, but obviously I suck. But uh, yeah, so this is a an Altegra build, um, full Altegra, basically bone stock, literally from the seat, which is uh, Scott's in-house brand, Synchros. Um, I haven't made any changes, um, I guess, uh, barring one. I, I did go for a longer stem, so I guess that should, uh, segue into the the first topic so what size is this um for those of you that know me i'm not like a super tall guy but i'm like 5 11 um on a good day and some of you might be surprised that this is actually a small scott foil um, which equates to a 52. i did my homework and i definitely recommend that you guys do this too I looked at uh, Geometry Geeks, which is a, a really cool website. Um, it allows you to compare geometries across different brands and frames and years. Uh, they, they have a super uh, rich database for you to, to comb through. So I compared um, a few of my other bikes that I had have had over the years um, with the, the Scott Foil, and I really noticed that it was super tall and um, yeah, quite a bit longer in the 56. I think if I went with the 56, um, yeah, it would have been way too big for me. And the one drawback with going with the, uh, the smaller frame is it did come with, I think like a 90 mil stem on here. Cause it's, it's kind of, I, I think the Scott recommends the, the 52 is for someone like up to like five, seven or something. It's like, really, really uh, different from my height. So I did have to buy a, um, a longer stem. So that's a 120 on there. And you can see this stack. I, uh, I actually, you know, I, I was very close to, to cutting and, and, you know, slamming the stem. But honestly, I felt like I could get in a very arrow position 
with this smaller frame, um, you know, with that stack, and it's it's aero and comfortable. I've had uh, countless people tell me that, yeah, I just I look lower on the bike. I know I, I've I've talked about that in past videos that all the photos of me in the past, it, it really just looked like I was like, you know, standing on stilts above uh, some of the other people in the Peloton. And I think that was really down to fit. So that, yeah, that was the, one of the main reasons that I wanted a new bike was I wanted a better fit. And I'm really happy with how this bike fits me. This is definitely top of my mind for buying this bike. And the, the next reason for shelling out for a new bike was tire clearance. This was a, a big one for me. And the, the foil is pretty good with tire clearance. The manufacturer recommendation is 30 cc tires or below, but um, you can see it's, it's, it's got tons of room in the front. This is a 28 um, and this is a 30 in the back. You could easily fit a 32 on there. It might be a little close in the back here, but um, yeah, I definitely wanted the ability to act to at least run 30 C tires and this bike does that um, in spades. And I think that along with the fit is the dominating factor with this bike. You know, people would ask like, oh, does it feel aero? You know, like, does it hold speed better? Um, yeah, it might, it, it might be uh, slightly faster over a 50K TT or whatever. But the biggest thing that I will say um, the biggest improvement that I will say is the fit being more comfortable in an aero position and the wider tires. I think if you have the ability to run 30s, you know, even if you're doing, um, you know, just crits and, and things where you're, you're, you're not riding super chunky, um, rough pavement, I still recommend putting 30s on there just from the increased handling confidence. Um, it is a game changer. Let's go into kind of the bad and the ugly of this bike because like I said, I didn't get any incentive to, to tell you guys anything but the truth here. So the first bad that I'll talk about is this wonky seat post design. So this is actually three pieces. It has this kind of main piece, um, this sort of just fairing, like you can pop this out. I'm sure you've probably seen it in videos. And then a third piece that is just bracing and the, the clamp, you know, just pushes like this and, and holds the seat post in place. And there's nothing connecting these three except for just clamping force. And with something like that, you know, the, it's like a three body problem where you're going to have movement between those three bodies. And that equates to creaking and you know funny noises and this bike almost from you know the first month it was just way more creaky and noisy than my bmc and it's actually kind of a big deal for me um and and kind of a big uh reason why i'm not you know just singing the praises of this bike but um creaking and noises they just sort of degrade your confidence in your bike i know it's it's really minimal um but when you're ripping a sprint at, you know, 1300 watts and you hear, you know, it just, it, it's not the most confidence inspiring thing. Um, so yeah, this, this seat post, I, uh, I know they make a just solid, um, you know, it's, it's not three pieces, it's just one piece. And that's like what the world tour guys ride. And I, uh, I'm definitely thinking about shelling out for that. The problem, another minus about this bike is also related to, to making noises. And that's actually the rear hub. So I don't know why, but um, these skewers for the or through axles for the, the rear hub, they, they have a lot of play in them. And you can go over, you know, hit like a pothole or something, and it will move the rear wheel unless you have it just super cranked down. Um, and what that leads to is a uh, rear brake rub. So yeah, that um, the rear dropout and rear through axle, uh, definitely a negative.
The last bad that I will talk about, um, this isn't a huge thing for me, but I just, I feel like I need to mention it for some people. So obviously this thing, it's got, you know, really thick tube shapes and uh, especially this fork, you know, it's like really chunky here. Um, and what that can lead to is in really gusty, strong crosswinds, it can, it can be a little unnerving. Um, you know, especially if you're used to just a, a normal kind of, I guess, non-aero bike. Um, you definitely feel it, um, you know, when the, the gusts are around 30 miles an hour or so. It's nothing that you can't, you know, handle, but I just know that some people are a, a bit more um, sensitive to the feeling of crosswinds and the feeling of their bike getting swept out from under them. So what bike review is complete without weighing it? So I just weighed this bad boy and it is 18.12 pounds. I'll put that in kilograms because I can't math. But uh, yeah, she, <laughs> I should have mentioned this. She's a bit of a porker. Um, you know, that is about a pound heavier than the BMC. And don't get me wrong, um, these wheels are pretty heavy. Um, yeah, these are 28 and 30 GP 5000s on there. Um, you know, not even a carbon rail saddle. Um, but yeah, I guess you, uh, I'm not climbing too fast anyway. So uh, hopefully that arrow, um, those deep tube shapes are making up for that heavy weight. How does it ride? Um, you know, I think this bike rides great. Um, do I think that it rides better than a tarmac or, you know, better than another kind of similar age bike? Uh, probably not. You know, I, I think for me, the, the main draws to this were, like I said, it's the, the fit and the tire clearance and then the price, you know, and I got a really good deal on it and uh, I'm, I'm happy with my purchase. I, you know, I think it definitely has not been holding me back but it's definitely not one of those things where you, you just feel like you have a motor, you know, when you, when you get on this thing, uh, you, you still have to turn the pedals around. So I guess I should tell you guys how much I paid for this. So I got it from Sports Basement, like I said, um, it was 35% off, um, which I think it came out to be 4,200 bucks um, plus tax. So it's not cheap, but I think that's a fair amount um, less than a lot of comparable aero bikes. Like I was looking at the Cervelo S5, um, obviously not a pure aero, aero bike, but the, the Tarmac SL8. And those were, you know, gonna be running two, two and a half thousand more dollars for a similar, similar build. So I think, uh, you know, overall, this was a, a pretty good purchase. I. I bought it on a, I got a new credit card. I definitely recommend you guys do this. Uh, if you're making a big purchase like a bike, you might as well open up a new credit card and, and get a sign up bonus. I think I got uh, like 900 bucks back from, from Chase. So that knocked down the price um, a fair amount as well. But yeah, overall I, I've been super happy with it. Um, you know, I took it all over the country. I, I just, recently got back from uh, Chicago Grit. And uh, yeah, she, uh, she hit the pavement <laughs> um, just once, luckily. Uh, but yeah, she, I, I had a lot of fun on this bike. Um, if you have any questions, if you're considering a Scott, I know they're really hard to find. Um, feel free to drop a comment down below. Um, yeah, I, I would say I would give it like an eight out of 10. I, I would recommend it to a friend, but it's not gonna, you know, turn you into a Tour de France rider uh, when you're a cat three or whatever by buying this bike. But it is going to be really nimble and handle well, especially with those 30C tires. Um, it's gonna feel really snappy um, and just a new bike, you know, guys, you, you probably know this, it just, it feels good. Um, so I think that's why, you know, the, the pros, they, they obviously are exchanging parts, you know, constantly to, to keep that new bike feel. Um, so that is another big benefit, but yeah, I just wanted to make this video. I know the, 
the audio and everything is, is probably crap, but um, I'm getting back on that wagon. I hope you guys enjoyed it and keep an eye out for some more videos um, about the racing and, and everything that I, I went through, <laughs> the trials and tribu tribulations of this year. But yeah, thanks again for the support and I'll talk to you guys soon.